Mrs. K here with an introduction to physiology part one. So living things can either be unicellular or multicellular. They can be made of one cell or more than one cell. All unicellular organisms, um, they're made of one cell and so all their processes must occur at the cell cellular level of physiology. Um, because they're only made of one cell, their cell can't be specialized per, for particular jobs because that one cell has to do everything that the cell needs in order to maintain homeostasis. Unicellular organisms can interact with other organisms to increase their physiological efficient, efficiency. Um, this is how we usually encounter them in everyday life. So just because a cell or a, an organism is unicellular doesn't mean that it can't live with other organism, organisms of a similar type in order to in order to cooperate and get things done efficiently. Um, and unicellular organisms can either be prokaryotic or eukaryotic, but prokaryotes are always unicellular. Eukaryotes are only sometimes unicellular. Prokaryotes, which have no nucleus, they are limited in complexity due to their lack of membrane-bound organelles. If you'll remember, most of the organelles that we're familiar with have a membrane on the outside. Um, ribosomes do not have a membrane on the outside. So prokaryotes do have ribosomes and DNA, but they don't have membrane-bound organelles like mitochondria, chloroplasts, or a nucleus. Therefore, all of their physiology must occur in a relatively uniform environment. Since they don't have these organelles that can compartmentalize processes like cell respiration um, or um, DNA replication, all of these processes have to happen um, in a similar concentration throughout the cell. Some prokaryotes demonstrate physiological modes that are unique among organisms. So some prokaryotes do or carry out um, life functions that are different from any other uh, living thing on Earth. And it, for example, we have deep sea hydrothermal vent communities, so way down at the bottom of the ocean where different um, uh, chemicals are oozing out of the Earth's crust. Uh, we have these bacteria called chemiotrophic bacteria. They are able to capture energy, somewhat like photoautotrophs do, but they capture that energy from different chemicals that are oozing out of Earth's crust. And they are the producers in these communities. There's no plants down there. Um, and so all these other fish and other um, organisms are relying on these chemiotrophic bacteria in order to, to be the in order to be the producers for the ecosystem. Um, some prokaryotic species have modified the cell membrane to specialize in particular nutritional modes. So while prokary prokaryotes do not have uh, mitochondria or chloroplasts, sometimes they have infoldings of the cell membrane, okay, so that they can carry out these processes. So this is an aerobic prokaryote, and as you can see, its cell membrane has been folded in and out, and this is forming a respiratory uh, membrane, somewhat like a mitochondrion, but it's actually the cell membrane that's doing this. And then this is a photosynthetic prokaryote, and it has infoldings on its surface um, that are similar to thylakoid membranes, and it is able to carry out uh, photosynthesis. Now moving on from prokaryotes to eukaryotes. Eukaryotes um, can either have be made of one cell or many cells. Unicellular eukaryotes are able to utilize membrane-bound organelles to compartmentalize the cell. Now, even though they're made of one cell, these are eukaryotes, so they have organelles inside their cells, so they can um, have different parts of the cell work on different things. Um, this, compartmentalization, this compartmentalization allows for more regulation of cellular conditions, okay, so we can have one part of the cell that's highly concentrated in one enzyme and one part of the cell that has none of this enzyme. And it also allows for a wider diversity of physiological processes to occur in the cell because certain parts of the cell um, are fo focusing on different functions. We have a division of labor so the cell can do lots of varied things. For example, we have our paramecium and the amoeba. Our protists typically, our protists fall in this group. Also, we have some fungi in this group as well. Now let's look at our multicellular eukaryotes. Um, this includes our fungi, plants, and animals. Okay, we don't have any um, multicellular protists. Um, fungi are multicellular, but it turns out they have a limited cell differentiation. Their cells don't exactly carry out different functions, um, unlike a human who have, whose brain cells carry out much different functions than eye cells or skin cells or lung cells. Um, because the cells of fungi are not specialized, um, their physiology remains largely a function of the cellular 
level of organization. So the cells pretty much all carry out all the functions. Um, this is a diagram of a fungi, or of a fungus. Um, the top part is the fruiting body, and underneath in the soil we see we have the mycelium. Okay, you can think of mycelium somewhat equivalent to roots. Not exactly that. Um, the, divisor, the diversity of fungal mycelial hyphae, which are what we're looking at right here underground, um, is one thing that differentiates some um, fungi from others. So we have our septate mycelial hyphae, and these have cells that are separated from one another. They're separated by something, um, a compartment called a septum. And this is an example of a septate hyphae right here. Um, so you can see the little blue dots are the nuclei, um, and we have a septum that's separating each individual cell. The purple part is the septum, and on the outside we have a cell wall. In our sinusitic um, mycelial hyphae, the cells are actually fused together. They don't have that septum that's separating them. And so they're basically making something that has more than one nucleus. So it's called a multinucleate structure. So that's it for our introduction to physiology part one. Um, stay tuned to talk about plants and then animals.